We know that we've got an enemy out there that wants to rob, to kill and destroy. And this morning we're going to uh, begin to open up a, a subject about uh, spiritual warfare. And uh, as we open it up and as we start to speak about it today, I'm just going to start to touch some of the surface, get us a little bit aware of a few things. And uh, then we can start to hit it and start to believe God. There's only one thing that the enemy uh, c- cannot touch, and that's the Word of God. Amen? It is sharp and powerful. It's alive, and, and that's what you and I have got to live by, and that's how our existence is. Uh, the Scriptures teach, obviously, the existence of Satan, who is the organizer and the originator of sin, and the king over a host of fallen angels and spirits that carry out his work. He's got a host of enemies out there and he desires worship, he desires praise, he wants, he wants people to just come before him and honour him and respect him. And in many ways, he's got many, many false religions. But how many people know that Jesus is breaking through? And we're finding today that uh, whole Muslim mosques are turning to Christ, and uh, there's a move of the Spirit. Jesus wears the victor's crown, amen? He has triumphed over hell and death. He has annihilated the power of Satan. So Satan there, he is the organizer of sin, the originator of sin, and he has a host of fallen angels and spirits to carry out his work. Christ conquered Satan and the kingdom of darkness at Calvary. Do you believe that today? We've got to know that these things, before you enter these things, we've got to really have this established in our mind. And has commissioned the church, the believers, to deliver mankind out of the kingdom of darkness and bring them into the kingdom of light. That's the whole purpose that we're on this planet. Once you got born again, once you got saved, you might as well and filled with the Holy Ghost and baptized in water, you might as well go to heaven. Amen? But we're here as God's army. We're here as God's ambassadors. We're here as God's people to, to, to deliver people out of the kingdom of darkness and bring them into the kingdom of light. The final judgment of Satan will be when he is cast into the lake of fire. That's his final judgment. Amen? Satan's fall. How many people know that he fell? I want you to have a look with me in the book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 12. This is what it says. It says, how you are fallen from heaven. Where did he fall from? Fell from heaven. He had a place in heaven. He, was high, he had a high place in heaven, but something happened to him. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation, on the farthest side of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High, yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, the lowest depths of the pit. So here is a man or an angel or whatever he was that had a very, very high position in heaven. But all of a sudden, pride and arrogance and different things got inside him. He said, I will. Satan fell through pride and self-will. He rebelled against God. In Romans 8 verse 44, Jesus talking to the church, to the Jews, who wanted to kill him for speaking truth, he said, You are of your father the devil, and the desire of your father the devil you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources. He is a liar and the father of it. Father, we come today and Lord, we we really want to understand our position. We want to understand who we're fighting because we have said a lot about the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. So Lord, we know that we are flesh, 
we're spirit, we're soul. And a lot of things we try to do, we try to do in the flesh. But Lord, let us understand today that our war is not in the flesh, it's in the spirit realm. And so my God, I pray today that you would help us. And I, and I also pray, my God, today that we cover ourselves with the precious blood of Jesus. Lord, that you would just cover us and watch over us and, and help us today to have an understanding that goes beyond our natural comprehension. First, we must understand that Jesus the Christ has won the victory. Amen? Understanding this truth is very, very important. I love those songs that we sing this morning about, about the ground being shaken and everything like, like that. Christ's victory, if there's nothing else to write down, write down this, please. Christ's victory is certain. It's certain and can never, ever, ever be undone by the devil. What Jesus has done is certain, and it can never, ever be undone by the devil. However, Christ's victory in our lives is not evident until it is applied by faith. It's got to be applied by faith. This is one aspect of spiritual warfare. You've got to apply the anointing, the power of God, the word, the cross, the blood, and any area that the enemy, on any area that the enemy tries to attack you on. 1 John 3, 8, this is what it says. It says, he who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. Jesus destroyed the works of the devil. Amen? We have to renounce the weaknesses in our flesh. I want to just... Uh, you cannot cast a devil out of your flesh. If, I've seen a lot of people that, that might smoke or might drink or might do this or might do that, and they, they come out and they say, well, you deliver me. No, you've got to apply the, the Word of God to your life. You've got to overcome that thing, amen? You know, a lot of people then, so, so you, they come out there and they say, will you pray for me to cast this demon of nicotine out of my, out of my body? Will you cast it out? So, so you know, way back there, we, everything was a devil, so we cast out everything. Pray for that and we'd, we'd get out, stamp our feet and yell and shout and carry on and do all these sort of things. And then the person would go outside and they'd open up their cigarettes and they'd pull one out and, and they'd put, light it up to see if it worked. And then they'd say, well, that didn't work. And so, you know, you can't, you know, if, if, you, if you hit your thumb on the ha with a hammer, it's not a devil, it's not a demon, you know what I mean? It, it's painful. The thing is, you just hit the wrong nail. <laughs> but you see, what Jesus said is, it's by my stripes you are healed. So if you hit your thumb or something like that, yeah, you claim healing. You know, say, you foul devil, you made me hit my thumb and blah, blah, blah. It's got nothing to do with a demon. It's just that you're a bad shot. <laughs> and I've hit that thumb and I'm looking at it many, many times as an apprentice carpenter. You've got to overcome. You've got to work on those sort of things, the, the things of our flesh. But when it comes to a demonic force, and there are spirits of, uh, there's unclean spirits, there's spirits of infirmity, there's, there are demonic forces that, that are active in the church. And those sort of things have got to be renounced. And there's no person who's got more power over that than you working with Jesus. A lot of times we come out and we want somebody to pray for me, somebody to cast it out, and that's fine. And Many times it will happen, but the Bible says that if you don't fill that house again with something precious, the Holy Spirit, that the devil will come back and you're worse off. And I've seen a lot of people that are actually worse off. But you see, if you work with Jesus, if you work with the power of God, and you are serious about wanting to be set free 
and delivered from the demonic forces, then you work with Jesus and you say, Jesus, I renounce that thing. I, I rebuke that thing. And then you fight the temptation. Then you fight the enemy. Because the weapons of your warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. And that's what we need to do. We need to pull down strongholds because, you see, the enemy, the enemy comes in to try to destroy us, to try to take us off course, to try to take us into a different realm, a realm of the flesh. But the realm of the Spirit is very, very real. For this purpose, the Son of God was made manifest. The devil is not in chains in hell. You cannot cast the devil to hell. He, the hell is prepared for him and one day he's going to go there. But you cannot cast the devil into hell. He is not in chains. He goes around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He's at work. He's, a roar, he's roaming the earth, seeking whom he may devour. Christ's victory has to be applied. What Christ has done for us has to be spoken over your life. You've got to confess it. You've got to speak it. We spoke last week about I am a new creation. I'm a new creature. I'm a brand new man. Old things are passed away. I cannot blame things on my past. My past is behind me. My future is ahead of me right now. I am a new creature in Christ Jesus. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. I, I can live victorious. I can rule with Jesus on this planet. You see, something very, very practical today, a tube of sunscreen, sunscreen oil will not do you any good in the tube. It has to be, it has to be, the Word of God will do you no good in between these pages. <laughs> it has to be applied. I've got to say things. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, has set me free. Hallelujah. I'm brand new. Glory to God. The foul is clean. No weapon formed against me can prosper. Every tongue that rises against me in judgment, I will condemn it. I'm going to pull it down. Say you have got no rights in my life. You are trespassing. I am, I am a child of God. I am a child of God. Hallelujah. Come on, that should get somebody shouting a little bit. You should, that will give the devil a, a hernia and a, and a heart attack and, and, and any other thing that get. Yeah, amen. <laughs> this is where Victor's crown. He has triumphed over hell and death. That's a weak excuse if we just keep blaming the devil. Somebody said they saw the devil sitting in the gutter one day. And he was sitting there crying his eyes out. And, and somebody walked up to him and said, what's wrong with you? He said, oh, he said, I'm very sad. He said, why is that? He said, I, I can't do half the things the devil, that the church for. Our salvation is automatic, though. Our salvation is automatic when you receive Jesus as Lord. Amen? Our salvation, I, I am on my way to heaven. Hallelujah. Anybody else on your way to heaven today? Come on, I am on my way to heaven. Hallelujah. That is automatic. The moment that I stood in front of an altar, Jesus, will you come into my life? Will you forgive me my sins? I thank you that he washed me, that he cleansed me with the crimson flow. Hallelujah. I've been changed. My sins are washed away. I'm, a brand, I'm just clean now. Hallelujah. I needed a good bath in the, in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Anybody else like that? Our salvation is automatic when you see, receive Jesus as your Lord. But many do not live a victorious Christian life because of the, of the flesh. Colossians 2.15 says, having disarmed. Everybody say disarmed. What does that mean? Just think of that for a little minute. Having disarmed principalities and powers. 
He made a public spectacle of them. He just didn't do something in the back corner. Jesus, oh, Molonde. Now, I want to just give the Lord a thank you for that. I want to say thank you, Jesus. He disarmed principalities and powers, and he made a show of them openly. Amen. He made a spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. It was a practice in those days in the Old Testament there that when they went out to war and they defeated the kings and, and, the, and the soldiers and the armies as they surrendered, that they would bring them back into their city, they would, that they would uh, put the, the kings in chains and strip them and goodness knows what to them. All the army would be coming behind them in chains and they would display them publicly saying, we have conquered this enemy. I want to tell you, friend, the enemy has been conquered. The enemy has been... He said, I, I made a show of him openly. I triumphed over him in it. Amen. I love that. Amen. And they're the sort of things that, you, that build your faith and you know that though I'm a man and I'm a natural man, the greater one dwells within me. Greater is he that's in me than he that's within the world. And I can draw upon the power of God and I can draw upon the anointing of God, and I can draw upon the victory of the cross of Calvary, and I can draw upon the Word of God that is sharp and powerful, that more powerful than a two-edged sword. It is, it is alive and it is well and is worked mightily in me. Like my breakfast that I had this morning is working mightily in me. Hallelujah. It's given me strength to walk. It's given me strength to talk. But I want to tell you that there's a greater thing inside of me, Sharon. Hallelujah. There's a greater thing working inside me, Millie. Ooh, chuck a bundy. Yeah. It's working mightily in me. Is it working mightily in you? Just, you've got to draw upon it. There's a lot of Christians that are not living victorious lives. You start talking to them, they're full of misery. They've got the mully grubs. They're walking down Grumble Alley. The devil's got me on the run. <laughs> well, we're supposed to have him on the run, amen. The Bible just says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. I love when the Word of God makes a, a powerful statement that is so small, you know what I mean? The devil just resists the blighter and he will run from you. That means scream in terror. Sure. <laughs> Oh, glory to God. I'm thinking of that old preacher that preached it. Jimmy, oh. <laughs> he did a guy, oh. Have anybody else ever seen that guy? Oh, he's fantastic. I love him. I love him. I love him. Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. That's what God did. Amen. Pray to the army that we have destroyed him. You know what one of your greatest strengths today is outside of the blood and the word and the anointing and the victory? <laughs> your testimony. They overcame Satan by the blood of the Lamb and the... They overcame Satan by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. We might claim the blood, but how do we speak? I'm being attacked. I'm a new creation. <laughs> oh, hallelujah, amen. The greater one dwells within me. There's no victory without obedience. The only way victory will come is to pray and obey. No other way. Hello. Hello, I shouldn't have touched Millie. I knew I shouldn't have touched her. I knew I shouldn't have touched her. I knew. I knew. You see me take my hand off pretty quick. Oh, Jesus. Come on. Why don't you lift up your hands and say, give Jesus a shout. Hallelujah. Tell him you love him. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. God's plan for man is to rule. Amen, do you believe that today? Rule on this earth. God gave Adam and Eve dominion. 
God uses words in Genesis 1, 26 and 28. It says, rule over, subdue. Then the fall of man came. Disobedience to God's word. Why do we need to war when Jesus has done it all? You see, he has done it all, but you have to apply it. You've got to apply it to your life. You've got to get it inside you and, and make it real, make it yours. Satan's tools is disappointment, discouragement, failure, defeat. We have to stand against feelings. Feelings get inside us and we go down. 1 John 5, 18 and 19, it says, We know that whoever is born of God does not sin. But he is born of God, keeps himself, or guards himself, applies the victory, is obedient. And the wicked one does not touch him. See, I, I just added a few things there. He was born of God, does not sin, but he who is born of God keeps himself. And the wicked one does not touch him. If you keep yourself under the spout where the glory comes out, if you keep yourself under the Shekinah glory, if you keep yourself in the presence of God, if you keep yourself in fellowship and, and, and worship and praise and, and, and allow the truth to get around your life, if you keep yourself, you can't just run around playing tiddlywinks and messing around and carrying on and expect that that scripture will be applied to you. You've got to keep yourself. You've got to keep yourself. And the wicked one cannot come near you. He cannot touch you. The wicked one cannot touch you. For we know that we are gods. And the whole world lies... Sorry. We know that we are of God. You've got to know that you're of God. But you've also got to know that the whole world lies under the sway or the influence or the control of the wicked one. Satan is not in chains. He is not in hell. He's gone around. He is, has control. He, ha, he has influence in this world. Ephesians 2 uh, verse 1 and 2, it says, The prince of the power of the air that now works in the sons of disobedience. Works in the sons of obedience. I want to encourage you today to get a hold of Tom's message on the three heavens was amazing. I've asked Ian to make some copies available. He's got half a dozen or more copies at the back there. If you're really interested and those copies are gone by the time you get up there, make sure you order a copy. The three heavens, it was amazing. It will help you to understand the spirit world. God, the Bible speaks of three heavens. It speaks about the heaven where God is. It speaks about a heaven, the second heaven, where the enemy is, where the where, and where the principalities and powers and angels and goodness knows what they all work in that area. Then there's a the third heaven, the atmosphere that you and I live in. Wars going on in the realm of the spirit. There's wars going on in those heavenly in that middle heaven. Wars going on there. Ephesians six twelve says, "For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers." against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. In the heavenly places. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers and against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Wrestle, to wrestle, is hand-in-hand -hand combat. Wrestle. Stand against. When you've done all to stand, you stand. You don't cop what he's trying to put on you. You don't just accept it, but it's hand-to-hand -hand combat. When you hand-to-hand -hand combat, you do what Jesus did. When the devil came and tempted him, he spoke and he said, It is written. Friend, you don't have to fight the devil that way 
but you wrestle, you speak the word against him, you, you, you speak what God says about the situation, not what the enemy is trying to say to you, not what the enemy is trying to do to you. Can I say this? Please don't take on the devil in your own strength. Please don't try to take on the devil in your own strength. You'll get whipped. Acts 19 verse 13. How many people know what that says? Let's have a little read here. Acts 19. Anybody getting anything out of this? Is this helping anybody? I tell you what, I, I, this is just, we're just opening this subject up. We're going to get into this over the next couple of, uh, uh, for the next few weeks, amen. We're just going to believe for the things to change around our lives and, and to get some information and understanding. And it says in Acts 19 verse 13, it says, when, the, when some of the itinerant Jewish exodus took upon themselves. Everybody say, took upon themselves. Don't take it upon yourself to fight the devil, amen. You resist the devil. You resist the devil. You speak the word of God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Took it upon themselves to call upon the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, we exercise or we uh, command you by the by the." Jesus, whom Paul preaches. There are seven sons of Sceva, the Jewish chief priest, who did so. And the, the evil spirits answered and said, Jesus I know, Paul I know. <laughs> but who are you? Who are you? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leapt on them overpowered them and prevailed against them and they fled out of the house naked and wounded. <laughs> Don't take on the devil in your own strength, amen. Don't try to fight him. We're just referring there in Luke chapter 4, 5 and 6, and the devil led him, Jesus, to a high place and he showed him all in an instant all the kingdoms of the world and said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor for it has been given to me and I can give it to anyone I want. Jesus didn't dispute the claim, the devil's claim that the world had been given to him at the fall. However, Christ, the second Adam, has defeated the devil through his obedience to, and his cross. Amen. He defeated the enemy through his obedience and his cross. He applied the word of God and he said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. Man shall worship God and him alone shall man worship. This is something that's very, very interesting too. And now, right now, at this moment, what, what's the date? 28th. The 28th of March 2021. Amen. And now in that date, Jesus controls the earth. Let me say it again. Jesus controls the earth through born again believers. See, that's our responsibility. I'm not here just playing silly wings, tiptoeing through the tulips with tiny Tim, having a little dab now and then, and a little this now and then, and come and have communion now and then, and have a little time here. No, God is now ruling the earth. Jesus Christ is ruling the earth through believers. Amen. He wants us to take over the world. Do you believe that today? He wants us to take over the world. By believers who exercise the hard-won victory over Satan by applying the authority and the power through the Holy Spirit. Behold, I give you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the works of Satan, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. I give you authority over all the works of Satan. Power, this, this anointing, this authority, and this power through the Holy Spirit. 
That's why we need the Holy Spirit today. A lot of churches are putting the Holy Spirit in the background, putting Him out. We want to bring Him to the front, amen. We want the Holy Spirit to come and, and, and be with us and get around our lives and, and speak to us and talk to us and, and share things with us. and That's amazing, amen. Let me just say that again. Jesus now controls the earth through born-again believers who exercise this hard-won victory over Satan by applying the authority and the power through the Holy Spirit. This is why Satan's fallen angels and demons war against the church, the true church. It's why they war against the true church. They're warring for dominion over the world. We've looked at so many people and demonic forces and Hitler obviously would have been full of demons that he wanted world dominance. You see different rulers and leaders that have risen up and their whole thing was world dominance. That's Satan's plan. That's what Satan wants. They're, they're evil spirits and they've got to be overcome. They've got to be trying. Somebody's got to overcome those things. But that spirit that was in, in Hitler, it just didn't get die. It's gone somewhere else now. It's still going around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, seeing what he can do, seeing what he can destroy. Satan's fallen angels and demons war against the true church, the true church for demonic, for dominion of the world. The devil now controls and influences the world because the church has gone to sleep. When the church rises up, I believe it's going to be on. Amen. Each believer must be able to fight by the Spirit and the Word of God in the realm of the Spirit. Romans 16, 19. And the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. And the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet. Not his feet, under your feet, shortly. Jesus is going to use believers to crush Satan's, uh, crush Satan, but in the meantime, we have the authority to bind Satan's plan. I believe that Jesus encourages us to bind the strong man. I'm going to read it, but Mark 3, if you want to put it in your notes, uh, 26 to uh, 27, it says, How can a how can you go and rob a strong man's house unless you first bind the strong man? Spiritual warfare is learning to fight and defeat our own spiritual enemies. And that's, I want to get onto that most surely next time. And, uh, but right now, we've got battles to fight in our own flesh. We've got battles to fight as we, as we fight lethargy, as we fight negativity, as we fight defeat as we fight the onslaught of the enemy, because he is trying to stop the church from rising up. He will do whatever he can. The true church. I'm talking about the true church. You see, there is a church within the church. And I'm not talking about this church, but there is, the church is universal. And if, in that universal church, there is a church. There is a church that God is raising up. They're in every denomination. They're in every different sphere of life. They're in every nation. There's something that God is doing by His Spirit. And friend, you won't, you won't find it and you won't be part of it unless you put yourself, and I'm going to say it again because I don't know any other way to say it, but unless you put yourself under the spout where the glory comes out, unless you put yourself in the position that you can receive. If you're in a church where, where it's unbelief and negativity and failure, you, you, it doesn't happen. But there is a church within the church that God is beginning to rise up. And there's people like-minded and, and some or other, we've always been believing that one day the churches will come together on the Sunshine Coast and that we will fill that, the stadium. We'll fill the, where, where they play football right now, fill that place, spirit-filled people in God. That this, this, that this city of the Sunshine Coast We'll have to turn and, and be known as the house of God. Amen. That Jesus will touch people and move. And, and, and I want to encourage your friends. 
The prayer meeting is, 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 is one of those places. Your own time when, when, you're, when you're on a, alone with Jesus. Don't let negative thoughts get around your life. Don't, don't come to Jesus and always praying about, about the problems that we're seeing and all the negativity that we're seeing and praying about the starving people over there and this sort of thing. Yeah, they're there, but that's not the focus of our prayer. Our, our focus of our prayer is come, Holy Spirit, come. Pour out your spirit upon us again. Raise up the church, my God. I will build my church and the gates of Hayes will not prevail against it. God, we want to see that church being raised up. We want to see those people stand. We want to see those people, Lord, being touched by the power of God. Father, today we, we claim the promises of God. Lord, we, we oh, Jesus. You don't want to be caught up in, a, in, in amongst all the negativity. Lord, we want to see you clearly. We want to see that you've got a plan. We want to hear the prophetic utterances that you've spoken in your word. You said in the last days you're going to pour out of your spirit upon all flesh. Hallelujah. Where you talk about a great healing revival. Where you talk about a great move of the spirit, Lord. Where you talk about the reapers and the harvesters overtaking one another. Lord, where you're going to pour out, pour it out, pour it out, pour it out on us, my God. And we'll give you all the praise. We'll give you all the glory. Can I hear an amen? You want to be in that number, friend. I want to tell you, you you got to attach yourself to something that's going somewhere. Oh, Jesus. I saw an old, old movie a long time ago. And it was an Indian reservation, and they'd found oil on the reservation. And the, all of a sudden, the Indian people became millionaires. And the Indian chief, he bought himself the best, the biggest, most powerful Cadillac he could buy. It was a, it was a uh, what do you call it, a convertible. It was the most beautiful thing. It was so precious. And there he was with all his feathers on and everything like that, sitting in that, sitting in that thing. And there he was. He had a big smile. But on the front of it, he had a horse pulling it. He didn't know the power that he had, amen, out of that bonnet. You might have an old horse dragging you around, but I tell you what, there's a oh, I think it was engine in that vehicle that's got more powerful in. Amen. Father, we do just come before you today, and a lot of us people here today that 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 might not know you as Lord of their life, and there's a desire in their heart to to find out about you. That they want to know if you're real. They want to know. God, where you stand, where they stand with you. There might be people here today that, that have never, ever met you, that they just want to come and, and ask you to come into their life. There may be people here that aren't sure about their salvation. They've had a hard trot. They've been buffered and bashed, and negativity has come in and taken over their life. There are people that just aren't sure where they stand. And Father, today I just pray for your anointing, for you to put the net out. And, and Lord, that anointing would just come and gather people and draw people. Draw people to yourself, Jesus. Draw people to yourself, Jesus. Not to this church. Oh, no, no, no. Draw people to yourself. People, my God, that are ready for a big change in their life. People are saying, I want to see a change in my life. I want to just leave this Norton, like, I don't know the word, just every day, every day to something dynamic and powerful. But today, if you're somebody here and you want God to come into your life and touch you dramatically, just wondering right now if you just quickly lift up your hand and say, that's me today. I would love that to happen to me. I want to know God. I want to know Him. Moses said, God, I want to know you. I want to know you. I want to know you. Amen. I see those hands that are raised. I see those hands. Anybody else quickly, just raise your hand in this place. One of those people that have raised your hands, if you'd be kind enough to stand to your feet, would you do that for me today? 
And I want you just to quickly come out the front here. I want you to just quickly come out the front. Just quickly come out the front. Maybe others that want to join with these ones today. Maybe others that just want to join with them. Just want to come. 